A couple of weeks ago, I helped my friend Mark unload a ton of kiln-dried slabs into his storage unit, then headed home to work on a project of my own. I need a couple of nightstands. This is my design for the nightstand. I didn't want to have any visible handles, and I also didn't want to use any metal drawer slides, so I went with a piston fit style drawer on top. I wanted a suede leather insert on top, which will help protect your valuables from getting scratched or scratching the wood. I'll be making a small hole to keep any cables tidy and organized, along with a small brass cable hold down to secure a phone charging cable. I also decided to line the drawer with some suede leather as a nice little extra touch. It's pretty simple joinery on this project. I've gone with rabbit joints, dado joints, and loose tenon joints, otherwise known as dominoes. With that, let's get into the build. I'm breaking this build into two parts, the first part being the carcass, and the second part being the drawer. I still have about two thirds of the white oak that I picked up a few weeks back, around 150 board feet. But as you can see, some of these boards are not exactly straight. In fact, some of them resemble a banana more than a piece of wood. So I trim off the ends to make sure that I'm not wasting too much wood when I join the sides. Then I remove a few staples that were left in the lumber. I grab the track saw, as I don't have a jointer or a table saw, and I use it to rip a clean edge that can be glued to another board. I then bring them over, liberally apply glue, and place them in between some clamps. I needed boards that were approximately 12 inches deep, and most of the white oak that I have was between 4 and 5 inches wide. And, like I said, without any straight edges. I had to glue multiple pieces together. I ended up making one long board and one short but much wider board. As you can see here, I used seven boards which left me with a 25 inch wide panel. These two panels will make up all the parts for the nightstand carcasses. When doing a glue up this wide, I find it always helps to add clamping coals across the ends just to keep the boards coplanar and stop them from ending up out of alignment. A quick trim to length on the miter saw, and as you can see, the miter saw doesn't cut all the way through with one cut, so I have to flip the board over to finish the cut. It's not ideal, but yeah, in a small workshop such as mine, you have to make do. Okay, now that I have all of my pieces ready to be planed to final thickness, I pass them through the thickness planer. As you can see, when they come out the other end, this one faces perfectly smooth. I then pass them all back through with the smooth face facing down and make sure that the other face is perfectly parallel. That's a lot of faces. Then it's on to marking out my joinery. First I mark out the dados, then I mark the rabbits for both carcasses. I find it easier to work on both carcasses at the same time rather than going and completing one and then coming back and finishing up the other. I use the router with a pattern bit that has a bearing on top that allows me to reference a face, as you can see here. I route out all the rabbits and the dados, which can be done on the table saw if you have one. Clean up my dado with a chisel, the first time you've probably seen me using hand tools in any of my builds. I swear I do though. I then cut both tops at the same time to their final length using the track saw. After cutting the tops to the final size, I then mark out where I want to put my suede leather insert using my T-guide. I'll use the router and remove approximately a quarter of an inch of material.
I start by using a flattening bit and end up changing bits halfway through back to the pattern bit as I found it easier to control and a significantly cleaner cut. I enjoy using the dog hole clamps, but these two that I have can be a little finicky to adjust. They just don't seem to have enough adjustment to get a really good clamp down. I'm going to have to look into getting some others that work a little bit more effectively. Also, the dust collection on the router is not great. In fact, it's horrible. But from what I've seen, dust collection on any router isn't all that great, so there'll be a lot of cleanup after this project. Talking of cleanups, I did a quick cleanup of my work and then onto a dry fit just to check that the carcasses go together. And look, they work perfectly. So after that, I take them apart again and go through the sanding grits on the internal faces and I apply finish off camera. This will allow me to glue them up and not have to worry about trying to finish the inside faces that can be really difficult to get to when the cabinets are glued up. Once it's assembled, I mass the spaces that I did not want to get finish on so that the glue would adhere properly. And then I remove the masking, apply a liberal amount of glue, and clamp up the carcasses. One thing to keep an eye on when clamping up carcasses like this, especially seeing as we're doing piston fit drawers, is that we want them to remain perfectly square. The other thing I try and do is use every single clamp that I have on every single glue up. At least, it feels that way. It's always good to make sure you wipe off as much excess glue as possible as this will make your life a lot easier when it comes to sanding and finishing. And now on to part 2, building the drawers. So I start by gluing up two pieces that I ripped down so that I could build the drawer faces. They're slightly wider than any of the stuff that I had so we had to go through the whole milling process over again, which involves passing them through the planer. then cutting them back down to size. I mark out where my rabbits and dados will go. Three sides will have a rabbit, and the draw face will have a dado cut into it to hold the draw bottom in place. I use the trusty palm router for the rabbits, and at this point I've totally given up on dust collection. using the chisel again to clean up the cuts. I measure for the base of the drawer, which I'm going to cut out of half inch plywood. I use the track saw to do the long rip, and then I decide just, you know, to keep things a little fresh. I'll use the jigsaw for the cross cut. using those little dog hole clamps that I was talking about earlier and a carpenter square. I hold the jigsaw up against the edge and proceed to cut through and then flip the square when I get too far and I can continue and finish the cutoff. This ensures they have a nice square edge. I then domino the two sides and the front faces. That's how I'm going to attach them. Ideally you don't want to attach faces to drawers in the manner that I did but I didn't want the sides to show on the edge and the mechanical stress on those drawers is very low.
I highly recommend this green persuasion device that some people call a hammer. I use for dominoes or a little tight. A few taps and it succumbs to my will. I need to do some shop updates soon as my clamp collection has grown and is becoming disorganized again. I didn't catch it on camera, but I double checked for square approximately 50 times. Did I say I find glue up stressful? Blast over the top with 120 grit sandpaper and then check that it fits. And just like that, you've got a perfect-ish piston fit drawer. And then there's this little fiddly bit that I did not account for earlier, so I had to rip a small piece just to fill in the back of the shelf. This time using a pattern bit with a bearing at the bottom, it's time to make an obscene amount of shavings. I cleaned up the edges on both of the tables. On both of the carcasses, I did one standing up and then realized it might be a little less awkward to do the other carcass on its side, but I ended up getting covered in shavings either way. Now to everyone's favorite part, sanding. Starting at 80, then 100, 120, and a final pass at 150, I did this for both table carcasses and both drawers. I clamp a backboard to prevent tear out and drill through the surface with a half inch auger bit. Clean up the outside edges with a quarter inch roundover bit. This way it should be pleasant on fingers and not too harsh on any cables that get passed through there. I then use a chamfer bit to add the hidden draw pull. I do the exact same to the shelf that's in the carcass. This way there's plenty of room for your fingers to get in there and grip. Now it's on to cleaning. A quick wipe over with mineral spirits just to make sure everything is clean before applying some Rubio Monocoat. using a white Scott Breitch pad to apply and clean shop towels to wipe off any excess. I apply finish to the entire nightstand, leaving only the area I want to glue the suede leather to. I've never worked with suede before, so this was a whole learning curve for me, but I guess last week I worked with leather, so not really the first time, I guess. I left it oversized in there as the glue setup and then I proceeded to glue the suede leather inset on the top. I use these offcuts just to be able to apply a little pressure to help the edges adhere properly, and I didn't want to add too much weight, so I just used a couple of offcuts to hold it down. I left it overnight and the next day came down, trimmed off the edges and all the excess suede with a razor sharp exacto knife thing. I do believe all that is left is to stare at the thing. Hope to see you in the next episode. Peace.